But first to the catwalks of Paris and the fickle world of high fashion, where no one is hotter right now than a tall, slender 19-year-old Australian. This blonde from Broadmeadows in Melbourne has the look the whole world wants. But as Rani Sadler reports, looks can be deceiving. It's a Cinderella story. The young Aussie plucked from the suburbs of Melbourne and rushed onto the catwalks of Paris. But this is a fairy tale with a twist. Because Cinderella is also Prince Charming. She's fun and unique, so that's great. A 19-year-old Aussie bloke okay. called Andre. Everyone wants to be around him, so. The hottest model in the world. Yeah. Do you think of yourself more as a man or a woman? Um. Andre Page is the boy from Broadmeadows who has suddenly found he's the girl everyone wants. Oh, wow. wow. That's amazing. <laughs> it's Paris, <laughs> and this is Andre's new life. Yes. It's lovely. Mm. Lovely. That's beautiful. Yes. Andre's androgyny is the hottest look in fashion. It's nice feeling. Does all this fussing and carrying on get to you after a while? A little bit, but um, I th it's better than bricklaying. <laughs> For the fashion press, his fine feminine features and androgynous look have somehow tapped into a more sensitive, less macho world post the financial crisis. Andre, who has a surprisingly level head above his chiseled jaw, sees it all a little bit differently. I think in times of um, recession and um, economic collapse, I don't think clients have much money to hire both um, men and women. Um, so <laughs> I'm really a good deal. <laughs> Two for one. Yeah, that was a nice comeback with your shoulder there. Yes, there. Okay, don't move, don't move. Andre was a quite uh, ordinary kid. He usually chose to play with the girls. He felt really comfortable with the girls. Life for Andre's mum, Jadranka, has been anything but peaceful. When Andre was six months old and his brother Igor, a year and a half, war broke out in their home of Bosnia. With just the clothes on their backs, mum fled with them to neighbouring Serbia. The war started, we became refugees. Then Australia offered a haven, and in 2000, they settled in Melbourne. Away from war, in the tough working-class suburb of Broadmeadows, they found what they needed most, acceptance and tolerance. At school, Andre might have been a little odd, but he was never an oddity. And another fact why he has never been bullied is Igor was there. So Igor was a strong, tough brother. <laughs> Andre is a, is a great brother. Um, we, had a, we weren't that close um, when he was a kid because I was um, we were fairly different, you know. He was more reserved. He, he liked to do more sort of girly things, I suppose. Um, and I was more masculine, I liked sports. What was the hardest thing about your childhood and teenage years? I think figure out, figuring out who I was, you know, and you know what most teenagers have, accepting the fact that, you know, I was different, um, and then, you know, being accepted for it. Actually, I was very interested in my makeup and my jewelry or something like that. I didn't find it wrong. And we had great times with makeups, with dolls, with dresses, with everything. Like mother, like son. Andre was in his final years of high school when he was spotted by a talent scout who suggested he send some photos to the Australian modelling agency Chadwick's. What did you think when they discovered you? <laughs> I don't know. I thought at the time I was looking for a part-time job um, 
and that, you know, I thought that was going to be better than, like, KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Deferring university, he quickly discovered his unique look was the one everyone wanted. I sort of am what I am. I don't really try and put a label on it. What's the word? Was it, a, was it your Sydney agent used? Femi men. Femi men. That was, I mean, that's actually just short Australian reporter that, that created that word. I, I find it really cheesy, actually. <laughs> you don't want to be a Femi man. Femi man. It's quite strange. <laughs> Do you feel beautiful? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm an attractive person, but I don't, I don't, you know, care so much kind of thing. <laughs> I don't place, you know, that much value on beauty. You know, I don't think um, society should either. But society does. Fashion sells. And nowhere is the beauty business bigger than in Paris. A whirlwind of appointments, photo shoots and shows. Today it's fittings and test shots for English designer Paul Smith, who can smell a trend a mile away. There you go. The whole androgynous look is very relevant to both men and women at the moment. So not just uh, not just in uh, the male industry, but in also the female industry. Now, but why it's happening, who knows? Who knows? It's fashion. Yeah. It could, be, could be anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fashion is about today and tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And he's today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's brilliant. <laughs> taken, yeah, he's amazing. I, I really do. I think he's he's one of the, the the best models that have been around for a long time. I think he's probably the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Former model Elgar Johnson is now menswear editor for ID magazine. Yeah. Andre is special, he says, because he possesses that little something extra you just can't put your finger on. He's so beautiful, but at the same time, there is something slightly masculine about him. You know, there's, I mean, I think when you see him in person, when you're around him, you know that that's a man, but there's just... To be able to pull off what he does when he does the women's wear, I think that's, that's what makes him very different. It's really good for your career. I mean, you can, you can model the, the bloke stuff and you can <laughs> model well, the girl stuff. Well, it's out that way. I mean, uh, they, at the start, they were saying, how. Uh, I'm very specific. There's, um, you know, only special clients will be interested. It's um, a very small market, but really, I'm more versatile than anyone. <laughs> Welcome back, Andre. Uh, the news is big, possibly the highlight of Paris Fashion Week. I think we had a confetti for the haute couture show for Gucci. His agent has just learnt that Andre has been booked for both the male and female shows of legendary French designer Jean Paul Gaultier. Blonde. <laughs> James Blonde. It's a huge honour. Gaultier has designed his men's show entirely around Andre. Where is the Golden Game? What's your work? Shoot the front row. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The show passes in a blaze of applause and cheers, and all eyes are on Andre. He was the James Blonde, the one on only. But the best is saved for last. A few days later, it's haute couture. A dazzling spectacle of Gautier magic. The women look beautiful. But it's the boy, or should I say bride from Broadmeadows, who brings the house down. Mum couldn't be prouder. I mean, his. The most beautiful girl I'll ever see <laughs> in the wedding dress. <laughs> right now, it looks like the party will never end for Australia's next top model. But fashion longevity is never guaranteed. Even Andre wonders whether his unique look 
will stand the test of time. The fact that, you know, you could be in one minute and out the next. You seem so restrained. You ever kind of go, woohoo, this is bloody unreal. I'm living the dream. Well, you, because, you know, when um, I have a house in the Hiltons, I'll, I'll do that kind of thing. I mean, you know, no, the reality is when I can repay my mum's mortgage, I'll do that. <laughs> it's cute. In Bosnia, we didn't have that big dream. We never, ever think that my, as a family, that uh, one of us is going to be the famous, let alone big international star. <laughs> That's quite amazing. That's a really Australian dream. <laughs>